Welcome, Van Build, day number four. Welcome to Red, White, and Bethune. We are Jen, Kyle, Ben, Molly, Ayla, and we travel with our four dogs in our 1983 Silver Eagle bus. Come along as we show you America through our lens. It's only a 1% chance of rain today, so we're going to try to get the rooftop vents put on, the max air fans, and we're also going to try to get this floor laid today. That's a, that's a tall order, but if we have good weather like we're supposed to, it shouldn't be any problem. Without wasting any more time, let's jump right in. Today we're installing two deluxe max air fans on the roof. Jet's going ahead and drawing in four pilot holes here, that way he's able to get the jigsaw in. He climbed up on the roof. We used the jigsaw with a metal cutting blade to cut the 11 by 11 hole. Ended up sandy going in at the very end cleaning up the edges. We ended up taking a little bit of white paint and going over to to avoid the rust. Like I said, we did two max airs, one in the front, one in the back. It actually worked out really good. We have wonderful ventilation in the van. So this is really the way to go. I, I, I'm glad we ended up doing both of them because we were only going to do one in the beginning, but probably decided to do both. We used spinal plank flooring from the Home Depot. It actually worked out really well. We've used this in other stuff, and Sandy and Jed had a good method to put it in. We really knocked it out really quick. What you try to do is you want to offset your pieces. You don't want them completely lined up the same. That way you can lock them in very well. We put this floor in in literally like an hour or less. Once you get around the edges and once you get around the stairways, it's a little more difficult, but all in all, it was a very simple process to put it in. I don't know about you guys, but I am absolutely beat. We got in today, Jed and Sandy busted it out. I had some business to attend to. We got the Willwell boxes built. And as you can see, we got this lovely floor put in. We're all pretty tired. So we're gonna wrap it up for today, but we'll be out here bright and early tomorrow, doing it again. So we'll see you tomorrow. Welcome back to day number six of the van build. This portion of the video is sponsored by Havelock Wool. Havelock Wool is a company based out of Reno, Nevada who produces fine products for van builds and any insulation need you may have. One of our main reasons for wanting to use Havelock wool is it's super eco-friendly. It helps with moisture. That's a big thing in these traveling vehicles, RVs and vans and things like that. Moisture is an issue and Havelock does the job. We're super excited to partner with them on this portion of the video. Today we're going to be installing this wool in the van, so let's get to it. Today we're installing the insulation and we realized pretty quick that we were going to need to install some of our roof boards to support the wool as we put it up. Putting it on the roof is very important also because that's where you're going to be getting the majority of your heat coming in. So we ripped a few boards just a little bit to fit in there snugly. So how's it going? It is going. We are stuffing wool currently and I realized how many small little nook and cranny holes there are in here to so literally stuff every single itty bitty hole. The Havelock wool really was a joy to work with. It's very safe, it's very eco-friendly and the kids were able to help us do the install. One of the other big things that furring strips came in very handy with was putting the wool. It gave it some support and it also gave me something to staple to as you went along. It was very important for us to fill in all the nooks and crannies, all the holes that we could get access to, because basically we're in a tin can and it heats up quite a bit, so we needed all the insulation support we could get. It took four boxes of Havelock wool to insulate the entire van. We're trying to stuff this wool in the ceiling right now. This is definitely the harder, hardest part of this insulation job. I would. So what I do, is I take the staple gun, I tack, I tack the string up, up along the roof here to kind of hold it up till we do get our roofing put in. If you don't, it just flops right down in your face and that's not much fun to work with. But I must say, working with this wool is not near as aggravating as working with regular insulation that itches you and makes you sting and all that good stuff. But it smells like a barnyard in here, which I think is kind of cool though. So we'll get back to work. The final step of the wool was, of course, to put it on the roof. Like I said in the beginning, we used string, which was a game changer. This is totally the way to do it. What we did is we took a full sheet, kind of spread it out as far as we go. On some of them, we had to put cut up a little piece and put at the end, but this is definitely a two-man job. Sandy helped me out. Without her, there's absolutely no way I could have done it on my own. The insulation turned out absolutely amazing. I could not have been more pleased with the Havelock wool. All right, we were able to get all the Havelock wool pulled in today. Huge thank you to them for supplying the wool for this build and for sponsoring this portion of the video. See my crew's a little worn out. 
but it looks great. It actually worked really good. The string, I highly recommend if you do, do a band build and use Havelock wool. Try to use, buy you some uh, thin string, get your little staple gun, it really makes a big difference. Got big sections will fall out and kinda, it just makes it easier when you're trying to work in there. But yeah, it was pretty easy. We, I think we did the whole thing in like an hour and a half. Yeah, putting up a few more roof boards. Um, so she's coming together. But as you can see behind me, the weather's turning bad. We gotta get our crap cleaned up, get everything put away, and buck them down. It's supposed to rain most of the weekend. I'm sure we'll try to get a little bit done, get it cleaned up, and uh, we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Welcome to day six of the van build. Uh, it's actually been a couple days, but we had a really rainy weekend. Kind of didn't do a lot. Oh, also still at a standstill a little bit with waiting on some components to come in. Most of that stuff should be arriving this week or later this week, or hopefully by the beginning of next week we'll have the majority of the things we need to get the the van livable but today we're gonna try to do a little bit like I said we're waiting on our wiring mostly so we can close in our walls and really start building some stuff but we're gonna try to build and add in a few things that we can while we're waiting on these components but super pleased with everything up to this point I love the insulation it smells like a farm in here which I think is kind of cool roof the ceiling we have is amazing Jed's actually dropping the spare tire right now we're gonna Try to get a good measurement for that so we can see what type of tank we can actually fit under there. So there's a lot going on and um, let's jump right in it. Today is all about building the living room couch. This is one of the things we were able to build without too many of the components, but this was a very important part of the build because this is gonna house our electrical system. We used two by twos to frame up the couch. We also used glue and pocket hole screws, which really made a tight fitting couch. In addition to housing our electrical equipment, it's also bedding for our oldest son and seating for our three kids as we're traveling down the road. Welcome back to Van Build, day number seven. Sorry about the other day on day number six. I wasn't able to close you out. We had an impending storm coming in. So I had to get it all, we had to get it all packed away, thrown in the tent before it started flooding. Anyway, we had to run out yesterday, grab some more materials. As you can see, we're starting to get a lot more supplies in from Amazon and other vendors. So we got plenty to keep us busy the next few days. Today we're gonna, I think we're gonna try to start running some wiring throughout the van for the different 110 and 12 volt stuff. And the generators came in yesterday, the inverters coming in today. So like I say, a lot of it's coming together really fast. So hopefully you'll start seeing some major changes on this van here in the next few days. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Today we were blessed with some absolutely beautiful weather. As every day we had to set up the tent, had to set up our workspace, unload the van, all the materials, put them in their dedicated space so we could jump right in and get to work. You know, planning out this van was quite the feat. Trying to fit three kids, two adults, four dogs, all in 120 square feet. So we had to design the bed with that in mind. It was not only going to support us, but Molly and Eli's bunk as well. So right now what we're doing is we're building the platform for the base of the bed to sit on. And Molly's getting it all painted up we put it together and it actually turned out really, really well. We were very happy with the construction of it. As you can see, or maybe you can't see, we got quite a bit done today. We got the platform built for our bed. We got the beams screwed into the wall. We went ahead and cut two pieces of three quarter inch plywood. Then went ahead and painted them. Obviously we've got a lot more bracing to do. We're ending up gonna basically run a wall right down the middle of the bed. So it kinda, it's gonna act, one half's gonna be our garage. Other half's gonna be the dog kennel. Got some wires, we kinda got, we got the majority, I would say, we got pretty much all the 12 volt ran today. Still gotta run a lot of the 110 stuff. But we made some pretty good progress today. Pretty pleased with it, had some good weather, so we were able to get quite a few hours of good work in. On a bench to our couch in the front is in. Still waiting on a few things to come in. Uh, we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere, so getting stuff in takes a little bit of time. Uh, changing anywhere between five and seven days from Amazon to get here. Some stuff that I'm not ordering on Amazon is taking even longer. But on to day eight, I feel like we've got quite a bit to do tomorrow. Do some more wiring, probably get all our 110 wiring ran, probably do a little more. I think we have a little bit of lower 12 volt wiring to run. Uh, this time next week, I want this thing to be close. <laughs> I know that's probably a little ambitious, but that's my plan anyway. We'll, uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you tune in to the episode three to see the electrical system come to life and the rest of this van coming together. See you next time.
Alyssa Fuentes was last seen on or about 4 a.m. Sunday, August the 7th, 2022, 22 years of age, missing from Selma, California, driving a 2011 Hyundai Accent, gray and silver in color, rear tinted windows. If you have any information to the whereabouts of Julissa, please reach out to the Selma Police Department at 559-896-2525. Let's see if we can try to help bring Julissa home.